Hey, Hammy here, uh, back with section 7.4, in which we will look at the second step of photosynthesis, the Calvin cycle, and fixing carbon. The second step, the Calvin cycle, is cyclical, okay? Uh, meaning one thing happens to another, to another, to another, and around and around we go. Uh, we are going to input CO2, carbon dioxide, uh, from the atmosphere. Uh, the, what we are going to look at is known as C3 photosynthesis. Uh, there are some other types uh, which we will look at in the next video. And it can be broken down into three stages, carbon dioxide fixation, carbon, di carbon dioxide reduction, and RUBP, ROOP regeneration. We say that plants are carbon dioxide fixers. Uh, what a fixer, or sometimes you'll see fixation, uh, means <clears throat> is that you're taking CO2, something out of the air, an element out of the, out of the air or atmosphere, and it's going to be attached to another molecule. Okay. In this case, that molecule is ribulose biphosphate. <clears throat> and that's done by an enzyme called RUBP carboxylase, or sometimes you'll see it as Rubisco. Uh, and it actually happens fairly slow, and it's needed so much uh, that it can make up a little over 50% of the protein content within the leaf of a plant. Uh, so if you take a CO2, which is one carbon, and attach it to a five carbon, obviously you're going to get a six carbon molecule uh, that immediately splits into two three carbon molecules uh, called 3PG, 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde. Uh, this reaction, again, is sped up by the enzyme Rubisco, and we now say that CO2 is fixed because it's out of the air and part of an organic molecule. Um, this is a good overview, a picture of photosynthesis breaking down the steps. Uh, this is an overall view. Again, if you're looking at the chloroplast up here, okay, the second step, the Calvin cycle, is now happening out here in the stroma. Okay, whereas the light dependent reactions happen over here in the thylakoid, in the thylakoid membrane. Okay, this this is now the Calvin cycle is happening out here in the stroma. Uh, here's our starting point up here uh, with our CO2 uh, coming into the cycle. Uh, and you're going to have Rubisco joining okay, the carbon dioxide to RUBP, which this is a C5, okay, and this is obviously a C1. Carbon dioxide only has one carbon. Uh, you join them together, you get an intermediate that is a six-carbon substance that will break apart immediately into a C3 molecule, 3PG, uh, and up here again are the names, 3 fossil. 3-phosphoglycerate, RUBP, ribulose 1,5-biphosphate. Okay, so the big fancy names for those. Um, this is step one right here, fixation. Taking CO2 out of the air, attaching it to a carbohydrate. Uh, step two is reduction, CO2 reduction. So those 3PG, those 3-phosphoglycerate three molecules, are going to be changed into BPGs, that's up here, 1,3-biphosphoglycerate, and then into G3Ps, glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate. Okay, this is our end goal right here, G3Ps. Uh, that's, this is what we're looking for. This is what we're looking to produce, okay? So how do we get from the 3PGs to the G3Ps? Two steps here. Okay, the first one, we're going to dump in energy. So here's the ATP. Remember, where did they come from? Okay, these are coming from the light dependent reactions. Okay, so first we're going to dump in some energy and then also the NADPH, which is the electron carrier. So we're also, so we're dumping in capital E for energy. 
and we're going to dump in electrons. That is, remember, if we're adding electrons, we are reducing. So we're going to reduce BPG into G3P. Okay, so CO2 is reduced. We've added, we've added electrons from the light-dependent reactions. Okay, uh, then the third step, regeneration of RUBP. Uh, we're going to take some, we're going to take five of these G3Ps. Uh, we're going to add in some energy and rearrange them back into RUBP so that we can start this cycle again. Okay, and then these G3Ps that are the ones that are spit out every so often, uh, we'll talk about later here, can become other organic molecules or you combine, okay, th this is a C3 molecule. We'll join them together to make our glucose down here. We can join two of them together. Okay, so step one, again, uh, when we talk about step two, uh, 3PG is reduced to BPG. Uh, and then BPG is then reduced to G3P. Okay, so it's a step. It goes to this. Okay, we added in ATP. And then when it goes to this, we added in NADPH. Okay, so we, here we added in energy. And from here we added in electrons. Okay, so electrons and energy are required for this stage. Uh, it uses NADPH and the ATP that are coming from the light dependent reactions. Uh, the G3P that is produced, that's at the bottom of the cycle for, on the previous slide there, is reduced. It has high energy electrons in it, and it's chemically able to store more energy and form large organic molecules like I showed on the last slide. This three-carbon substance, two of them can combine to form our glucose, which is our C6H12O6. Uh, this slide is just showing that more in a linear format. Uh, instead of kind of the cycle part, they just took out that second step, the reduction of carbon dioxide, and just put it in more of a linear format. So 3PG, again, is going to add in ATP. It's going to be reduced to BPG, which is then you're adding in the electrons from NADPH, and that's going to reduce it down here to G3P. And then, obviously, the ADP and inorganic phosphate group and then NADP plus go back go back to the light dependent reactions and pick up more ATP, more energy and pick up more electrons. And they keep cycling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, the third step, uh, the regeneration of root. Remember, this is step three. Uh, RUBP that's used in the first step uh, must be replaced. Okay, because again, because we are a kind of a three step cycle here, you need to get back to the starting point. So you need the RUBP to get to go back around. So every three turns of the Calvin cycle, okay, every three turns of the Calvin cycle, you're going to have five G3Ps. Why not six? Remember, we take one of those G3Ps, gets spit out, and is used to make glucose, okay? So the other five G3Ps, so if you have five G3Ps, that's five molecules of three carbons. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Five three-carbon molecules, okay, are going to get rearranged back into, okay, you went three turns, so you need three, three RUBPs to start this over again. Remember, RUBP is a five-carbon molecule, so you need one, two, three, four, five carbons, and you need three molecules of that. Now, you, you do the math, okay? These are G3Ps over here, and these are RUBPs over here. Count them up. Five times three, you got 15 carbons. Three, five carbon RU, RUBPs give you 15 carbons okay now obviously for this to happen we're going to have to put in some ATP some energy in order to do this rearranging okay but that gives us our three RUBPs uh, which can go back up start combined with three more CO2s 
and around and around and around and around we go. Again, the next slide, just showing it in a linear format, taking five three carbon substances, dumping in some energy and making three five carbon substances. Again, our end goal is every three turns, every three carbon dioxides to spit out a G3P, a glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Uh, remember, this is a C3 molecule. Okay, this is the important, important, important end goal. Why is that? Well, most of the time I thought photosynthesis, the plants make C6H12O6, they make sugar, Hampshire. Well, they can, okay, they can. Uh, when you join two of these G3Ps together, uh, you're gonna get, you know, times two, you're gonna get your c 6 h 12 o 6 So that's why we say uh, two turns of the Calvin cycle and every two turns you're putting in three carbon dioxide. So that's where you get your six CO2 that you start with in your formula, okay? And then you had six waters that were split to provide the electrons. You're gonna make your glucose, okay? And from the six waters, you get your six oxygens after that water is split, okay? So this is kind of our overall and how that relates to this. That G3P, the fate of that G3P, like what it's gonna end up being is not always glucose. The, the hydrocarbon skeleton, okay? Hydrocarbon skeleton, carbon to carbon to carbon bond. Okay, that can be used for many things. We can add a whole bunch of these together. And what do we get? Oh, sound familiar, huh? Carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon. Okay, that is used to make the fatty acids. Okay, and the glycerol is three carbon chain, okay, that goes up and down this way with the carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon bonds, fatty acids off of that to make fats, to make lipids, oils. Okay, uh, you can make glucose phosphate, the simple sugar, glucose, C6H12O6, fructose, okay, and this fructose with a glucose uh, is going to end up making sucrose, what we know as table sugar. Okay, how plants transport uh, these carbohydrates throughout the plant. Uh, it will also be the start of starch and cellulose, long-term storage of the energy or cellulose, cell walls, uh, structural materials. And that three carbon substance, okay, uh, we can also be the begin beginning uh, if we remove a carbon, add a nitrogen, okay, add a nitrogen, ah, and have, okay, ah, okay, let me get my amino acid right here, N, C, C, okay, we move that carbon here, add a nitrogen, double bonded oxygen, OH group, Ah, recognize this, North Carolina Cougars. Yeah, it's our amino acid. So actually the beginning of the proteins come from G3P, okay? So it's an important molecule. Uh, I like the way the next slide represents that. I like the way that this slide represents it here where you have G3P and they kind of just showed as a tree. Uh, sometimes we call this uh, the, the metabolic pathways that this G3P can become, or sometimes the metabolic pool, okay? Metabolic pool. In other words, okay, we can add nitrogen and make start building proteins out of the amino acids. Uh, we can make those carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon fatty acids in the glycerol, make lipids, oils, or again, it can become a glucose phosphate. Uh, which can which can become sucrose, which is energy for the plant, or can be stored as starch or building material, cellulose in the trunks, roots, and branches. Okay, so remember, the second step of photosynthesis is reducing the CO2 down into this awesome stuff called G3P in the Calvin cycle, which then is used by the plant for many, many different purposes, and then passed through the food chain. All right, hope that helps you understand the second step. Uh, and the final video then we'll take a look at how other than C3 photosynthesis, what are some other types of photosynthesis? Hammy, out. <laughs>